Hello and welcome to C Sharp. My name is Alex Aon, and today I will be giving a brief introduction to Xamarin Forms. Uh, my Twitter handle is alexaon12, and my GitHub is alex code for okc First, uh, I want to go over my timeline. I moved to Oklahoma City in August of 2015 and began working for a company called Side Advanced Biologics, which is a local pharmaceutical company here in the Oklahoma City area. Um, I didn't get involved with Oklahoma until January of 2017, uh, but in between that time, I got really interested in web development, particularly with Node.js, and I knew I wanted to learn more about it. In December of that year, 2017, I attended a talk. Uh, Josh Wedekin was giving a talk on how he had used Django to create a LIMS system, which is a laboratory information management system. And this was relevant to my current career in in the pharmaceutical industry where I had used um, such systems before and that's sort of what sparked uh, my desire to transition from the pharmaceutical industry to software development um, and that became a reality uh, when I got my first develop software developer job with uh, my consulting group in August of 2019 and more recently in January I joined Onotix as a software engineer so a little bit about me. I grew up in California, uh, went high school there, junior college and university. I went to Modesto Junior College to UC Santa Cruz and graduated with a bachelor's of science in bioengineering. So I moved, like I said, I moved to Oklahoma City about five years ago and worked for the pharmaceutical company for four. And I'm a recent developer. I'm currently working with Onotix. We develop customers, custom software solutions for the Air Force. and. I previously worked at MY Consulting, and they dedicate themselves to providing custom software solutions for the state of Oklahoma, particularly the Oklahoma Corporate Commission. So far, I've worked with C Sharp, Python, Microsoft SQL Server, Postgres, Go, and MongoDB, and as well as the web technologies HTML, CSS, and JS. If you'd like to learn more about Onotix or My Consulting Group, please check out those links I've provided in this slide. So what are Xamarin Forms? Well, Xamarin Forms is an open source UI framework developed by Microsoft and that allows you to build Android, iOS, and Windows applications using a single shared code base. And this is really advantageous because now you don't have to learn how to code for Android and learn how to code for iOS using Java for Android and using Swift or Objective-C for iOS. You can just code in C Sharp and XAML, which is an extensible application markup language with code behinds in C Sharp. It looks very similar to HTML, actually. And these are these interfaces that are coded in XAML are rendered as native controls in each platform, whether it be um, Android or iOS. Xamarin Forms provides a consistent API for creating these UI elements across all platforms, uh, iOS, Android, and Windows. These APIs can be used to impl can be implemented either with XAML or C Sharp, and they support data binding for patterns such as model view view model. They also have a material visual, which is a material design system that you can use with Xamarin Forms to give your applications a consistent look and feel across iOS, Android, and Windows. What is Xamarin Essentials? Uh, Xamarin Essentials is a NuGet package that provides a single cross-platform API that works with any Xamarin Forms, Android, iOS, or universal Windows platform application that can be accessed from shared code no matter how the user interface is created. So Xamarin Essentials provides an API access to things like an accelerometer for your phone, battery information, a compass, geolocation maps, etc. So to get started with Xamarin Forms, you'll need a couple things. You'll need Visual Studio 2019. The community edition is free for download. You'll need Xamarin Forms. XAML components resemble HTML tags. They are declarative, and they have attributes that you can access through the C Sharp code behind. Some major XAML components are content page, stack layout, editor, button, grid, list view, and cells. Going through the Microsoft tutorial will familiarize you with these XAML components. To download Visual Studio, go to visualstudio.microsoft.com and select either 
to download the Visual Studio Community Edition, which is free for Windows. Or if you have a Mac, download the Visual Studio for Mac. Uh, once you the download completes, an installer window will appear. And this installer window, you want to select Mobile Development with .NET to download Xamarin Forms. The download uh, is about 10 gigabytes, um, and it'll install Xamarin Forms. To get started building an application, we'll go ahead and launch Visual Studio, click Create New Project, and in the search bar, search for Xamarin.Forms. Select Mobile App with Xamarin.Forms, click Next, and choose a project name. In this case, I'm going to call this Project Notes, and I'm going to click Create. Here, I'm going to select the blank project, and I'm going to target the Android and iOS application. Click OK. Visual Studio has generated three projects within the Notes solution. One project is called Notes. The other project is called Notes.Android. And you have a third project called Notes.iOS. Code share amongst Android and iOS will be stored in the Notes project, while Platform-specific code will be written in notes.android project or notes.ios project. If you open up the notes project and double-click main page.xaml, following the tutorial, I've replaced the content of main page.xaml with the following XAML code. It declares that the, this main page is a content page that has a stack layout within it with specific margins. A label called notes, an editor for text input called editor. Notice the x dot name here. This allows the code behind file to access the editor component using the name editor. We also have a grid that defines two columns of star width. Star width means that these two columns will expand to fit the container. And we have a button named save with a click method named on save button click and another button called delete with a click method called on delete button clicked. If you want to preview what this code is going to look like in Android, just click this icon here on your window and you'll get a preview of what these XAML components would look like on an Android device. You can see how the components map to what is rendered on the page by going back to your XAML code. If you go to your label, you'll see text equals notes. If you go back to your render, you'll see that label rendered at the top of the page with that text. Your editor has a placeholder text called enter your note. And when you preview that, you, that's the placeholder text that you'll see in your text editor. All these components pretty much resemble HTML. Your first button also has text called save with an associated method. And your other button, which is specified to be in the grid Dot column one. So the second column, because columns in a grid are zero indexed, has text delete and an associated click method called on delete button click. If you go to the preview, you'll see two buttons arranged side by side in two columns where the save button is in the first column and the delete button is in the second column. I want to point out that the stack layout will arrange all of the elements nested within it vertically. And you can also see that grid is behaving somewhat like a div HTML element, but it's specifying two columns and then it lists the elements that it will be in those two columns, which are in this case two, just two buttons. Looking at the code behind, we see that we have a public partial class named main page that subclasses content page. And we have a constructor that will initialize that component 
And what, does the, what that does is it'll initialize the content page and all the elements within it. We also see that there is a definition for an on save button click method that takes a sender and an event. And we also have an on delete button click. Looking at the code behind file, what you'll notice is that underscore file name is a string that's defining a file name notes.txt in some location on the device. The main page constructor will initialize the main page component, and if that file exists, it will read from that file and put the text in editor.txt. If the file does not exist, editor.txt will be empty. To run the application on a simulated device, you can go to Tools, Android, Android Device Manager, and the Android Device Manager window will appear. If you click New, you can select a specific device, and you'll give you the options between Nexus series, phones, pixel phones, and generic Android phones with varying screen sizes. I'm going to select the Pixel 2 XL phone. Select the OS that you wish to target. I'm going to select the latest Android 10. If you click Create, a pop-up window will appear where you must accept the terms and conditions in order to be able to use the Android Software Development Kit. Typically, these Android device images are about one gigabyte in size. To run your project on an emulator, first build your project. Make sure your project build succeeds. Then you can choose which Android emulator you wish to run, depending on how many you have configured. Here I will select Pixel 2 XL, and I will hit the play button. This will run an Android emulator, and it will load my application to it. Here you can see the Pixel phone is starting up and booting. When your application launches, you can begin interacting with it. If you hit the plus sign, you'll be shown a new screen where you can input a note. Hitting the save button will save that note to a file and return you to the original loading screen that now has the note that you input. If you continue with the Microsoft tutorial, you'll eventually end up with an application that has two pages. One that will show you a list of notes and another page where you can add an entry to save a note. Both of these pages feature context binding. If you inspect the note page.saml file, you will see a list view element with a name of list view and a data template with a text cell element where text and detail are defined as being bound or binding to text and date. If you look at the code behind, text and date are binding to a model called note, which has the following properties, file name, text, and date. Here are some useful links I think you'll find helpful. I highly recommend you going through the Microsoft tutorial for Xamarin Forms. I found it up to date and very informative. You can also check out Microsoft's YouTube channel where they have a playlist that introduces Xamarin Forms. I hope this brief introduction to Xamarin Forms sparks your interest in mobile app development. Xamarin Forms definitely makes it easy to get started. I encourage you to check out the Microsoft documentation and their tutorials. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me on the Techlahoma Slack or on social media. Thank you.